My name is Dennis Collins. I'm giving the talk on uh, status in life, um, dynamics, and Julius Caesar uh, drama triangle cycling. It's based on the work in my book, Calm Conflict in History from 2011 with David Scienceman from Australia. Or that is um, the book. Thank you. One of the things that could be dangerous nowadays is uh, the loss of democracy due to um, increasing despotism around the world. So the idea was um, that in the Roman Empire, before it became an empire, uh, there was uh, increasing conflict of Rome with other places actually like Syria. And there was a guy named Mithridates who, um, who died in 63 BC. Here, there's actually a book written about him because he is able to avoid poisons and so forth. But anyway, the Ro Romans spent lots of time trying to get him and I think he killed hundreds of thousands of Romans before they finally got him. But anyway, uh, there's a similar situation in, uh, with Saddam Hussein that uh, he sort of escaped the U.S. a couple times. So the problem is that uh, within 20 years of the end of Mithridates, the Roman Empire sort of failed with uh, Julius Caesar taking over. So there is a problem today of the same thing happening within 20 years of uh, Saddam Hussein dying in around 2006, I guess. So that uh, we're so, f so far about uh, from 6 to 19, it's three-fourths of the way towards uh, the 20 years. Anyway, so it says, uh, could the same instabilities be set the U.S. has caused the Roman Republic to falter? within 20 years of the end in 63 BC of Mithridates the sixth, and lead to a return to the paternal model of, model of politics such as practiced in North Korea. So this was written in 2009. Uh, so we're going to try to use the central force model to study this problem. Let's see if I can get this thing. So the status in life then dynamics is based on a kind of logarithmic scale x of distance away from death. So the zero on the scale is like a person who's dead or has only minutes or seconds to live like a baby in a hot car or a person without oxygen. A one on the scale is days, hours or days to live like lacking water. Two is weeks or months to live like lacking food. Three is uh, just someone who lacks mobility and freedom, like is in a hospital, nursing home, or prison. Four is a dependent person, probably doesn't have any work, maybe no transportation, and might be living in a shelter or something. Number five, there's a, like a tra uh, change around 4.5 between a dependent person and an independent person. So you can think of a person on a tax reform, like. Uh, if he's listed as a dependent, it means he's not contributing that much. Otherwise, uh, an independent person is like employed. He has a secure source of income. He could be some kind of access to a car. Number six would be active person. He can support a family and has a mortgage maybe. Seven is a contrib contributing person. He has uh, basically a steady income and probably owns a house. Then. Uh, uh-oh, what happened? Uh, let's see, I should be able, oh, keep, keep going maybe. Let's see what happens here. Whoops, not so good. <laughs> see if anything happens if I try to go down this way. Okay, it looks like. All right, so um, the first model that I used is the so-called death and taxes model. And uh, 
That's what I handed out here. Actually, this is from 1872, a Courier and Ives print. But it illustrates uh, the art sort of getting ahead of math to this extent, that uh, you can think of a death force as being a central force that pulls the SIL, or status in life scale, down to zero. So uh, it's like if you throw a ball up in the air and wait, it comes back down. It has the shape of a parabola. So uh, this here, you can think of someone who's a baby, has a certain amount of resources when he's born, and he uh, can uh, achieve a certain amount of uh, success on the SIA scale, SIL scale. So he becomes independent during uh, youth, and then he's independent for a while. And then when he gets old again, he might be rejected restricted in mobility, like be in a nursing home or basically something like that, or a hospital. By the way, um, you can look at the outline of the talk. If you, if you want to, you can just pass this around, but I don't know how much time I'll have. I don't know if you're interested in this. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is an outline of the talk. So um, I probably won't have time to do much of this stuff. But anyway, uh, you can just solve this F equal MA. You probably, if you had any physics at all, you know that uh, acceleration is uh, basically equal to mass times, mass times acceleration is the force. So the death force here is like minus 40045, which works it out. And uh, the person starts at 0 uh, and goes up to slightly above 5, which means he's an independent person. And then at age 100, like in this uh, graph, he's back to uh, 0 again. He dies. So then uh, the next thing we added into that was um, the uh, government force, the central force. So um, if I can get this thing to work. Whoops. So, so this is uh, an example. The other one I had, k equal to 0. That means there's no government force. The government force can be thought of as a force that tends to a person pull people to an average of 4.5. They're right on the borderline between dependent and independent. So. Uh, if a person is making more than more money, he, he has to do pay taxes, and that tends to take him down on the SIL, SIL scale. Also, if he's making money by crime, the police can come after him and take him down on the SIL scale. If he gets put in prison, then his uh, SIL value will be less than 5 or less than 4.5. Like being in prison is like uh, four or three on the scale, uh, which, for example, has ha happened to many people in, in the U.S. recently. So anyway, uh, if a person is below 4.5, then uh, the government usually has some kind of program or something to try to improve them so they're not out on the streets and so forth. Or if they're a child abuser, the government will come after and try to help the children and. Uh, get them back up uh, to a higher status in life scale. So then uh, if you do this, you're basically putting in this 4.5K. Uh, it basically is uh, putting in a, uh, a term that is positive if, uh, let's see if this will go through or not. I've got the thing here somewhere. Uh, anyway, it's minus, the force is minus k times x minus 4.5, looking the second line down there. So if x is greater than 4.5, it will tend to pull the person down. If it's less than 4.5, it will tend to pull them up. So uh, there seem to be a sequence of solutions of this problem, and uh, the first one actually is... Uh, Let's see, very similar to the parabola solution. It's only slightly different. That's if you put in uh, 
a, a one here as the exponent. But anyway, the one we're interested in right now is uh, with a two. So this will make uh, the value come down to zero again when you get to 100 years old. And uh, the picture here, if I get it to work out, um, is, oh, 10 minutes left. OK, so we've got to get on to the other thing. But anyway, um, let's see if I can get this thing to go down here. All right, so um, let's try to get it back up. I'm not too good at doing this, but anyway. Uh, somewhere. I guess somehow that graph didn't come out. But anyway, what happens is, um, let's see what we have here. Anyway, somehow that graph disappeared. But what happens is that uh, the, um, the graph goes down to zero at 80 years old, and then there's like a little loop underneath there, and it goes back up to zero at 100. And instead of just going up to like 5.6, the graph goes up to 8. So uh, basically by having the government there, which will help you get started when you're like young, so it will pull you up above uh, 4.5, you can get a, an SIL value all, all the way up to 8. And uh, then when you get up above 8, it pulls you down even more because you have a it's like a spring. The government force at 4.5 is like a spring. So the more you pull it up, the more it gets pulled down. And the more you pull it down, the more it gets pulled up. So basically, uh, the, um, the government force will maybe cause you to die at age 80 instead of 100. But in compensation for that, uh, you'll get to an SIL value of eight instead of five something. Anyway, shocks in medicine, uh, the, um, basically, whoops, I guess there's nothing left on this. So I don't know what happened to the rest, the rest of the um, presentation. But anyway, let's see, what is this 10 or 11? But I can explain this uh, anyway, something that happens usually in my talks. Uh, I probably should go ahead and start talking about the, um, well, shocks in medicine. Uh, you can put in a delta function into the negative, and that uh, changes the slope. So if you put in a large negative uh, delta function, the person will basically die once you put in that shock, like getting shot or getting, um, getting in an automobile accident or like happened to one of the congressmen that had to resign or something, they, their SIL value goes down. And uh, the medicine, you can also put in a positive shark shock. So for example, on this, uh, on this chart here, there's like this soldier guy. So I was thinking of like uh, Horatio uh, Nelson, who was killed at the Battle of Trafalgar at age 47. So basically, that's a shock. He got hit on a boat or some on a ship, and he died. But you can ask what would happen to him today, like in modern medicine. So you can have a positive sh shock that would uh, bring him back up. So if you do that, what you find is that the parabola goes down and dips down, but then uh, it turns out that you could actually live longer because when you get decreased, the, um, you um, don't have the government pulling you down so far, so you can actually live longer. Well, anyway, getting on to the, uh, to the drama triangle cycling, I'll try to hand out some of these papers here. Uh, this is somewhat hard to follow without um, without having the, um, pay the values to look at. But anyway, uh, 
it seems like this has gone off the screen for some reason, but mostly what happens during my talks. Uh, maybe I can try pushing this thing over. That might help. Let's try this. I don't think it's going to do Oh, wait, maybe it will. Actually, it's probably my fault. The drama triangle cycling, uh, essentially, you can keep track of the person's status and life values uh, for each person, like an X, Y, Z. If X is taken as the overall aggressor, his or her SIL value can move or up or down versus time. Tip I guess it's my fault. I didn't know how to run this thing correctly. Typically, starting from a large value, say 8, if X, the, the aggressor basically is usually has a lot of power. So um, if X becomes a victim, his SIL value will become less than 4.5, indicating some kind of dependence. Newtonian dynamics can be worked out in three-dimensional space also with regard to central forces, as in uh, Tenenbaum Pollard book that was in the... Um, in the abstract. And so they um, show that a possible solution is a, um, let's see, I guess you have to go down on this side, uh, is a circle. So we can imagine, uh, you can set up the circle this, you can imagine each one of these things is like uh, 4.5 long, or 13.5 uh, units long. So the middle of this uh, plane will be having the coordinates of 4.5, 4.5, and 4.5, so that everybody would be basically at the borderline between dependence and independence. So then, uh, essentially, you can figure out the equation of the circle because... Uh, if you go from the center point to the vertex, that defines like the y-axis for a circle. And if you go parallel to the bottom line, which connects the uh, x and y coordinates of a straight line, uh, then that can be the, uh, the x-coordinate uh, or the, yeah, the x the x-coordinate of a circle, or in our case, it would be the y-coordinate. Well, well, it would be just on a... So you get an oblique uh, plane with... You can make a radius of 5, you get a circle. So then uh, we're thinking about um, what happens as time goes on, which is what's on this chart. So this thing is based on the deaths of the triumvirate members of... Uh, Julius Caesar. So uh, essentially, uh, the aggressor is considered to be Caesar. So he actually goes up above 8.5 and then gets, goes down lower. The victim is Crassus, and uh, he eventually dies in 52, 53 BC when his SIL value goes down to 0.41. So if you don't follow this, it's like a round in music where each one of the columns follows the same values. They're just in different order. So anyway, he got killed by actually, I think, one of the children of uh, Mithridates as he tried to uh, get more power for himself. Anyway, then, uh, so he's the victim. So he dies in 53 BC, but it, I just put 52 there. Then 48 is Pompey. He's supposedly the rescuer of the Roman Republic, but actually he gets killed by Caesar. So uh, the rescuer, his value goes down to 0.41 in uh, 48 BC. So you can see it was very high here, then it went down to 41. And as we assume that uh, we're not taking care, or we're not... Um, we're not keeping track of uh, the death force here, so we assume if you get close to death, there'll be enough uh, basically static to cause you to die anyway. So if we can get to the last thing here. Um, uh, is where Caesar is. 
Uh, 44 BC uh, is when Caesar was assassinated, March uh, 15th. So you can see that his SIL value went down to 0.41 in 44 BC. So that's, uh, you can imagine that thing sort of cycling around. And uh, typically, the, um, in three dimensions, uh, vortices dissipate, but in two dimensions they can persist. So this uh, triumvirate obviously didn't persist because every one of the members were killed <laughs> or died. But anyway, uh, it can be sort of temporarily uh, stable. There's a book called The End Vortex Method, which shows that uh, you can have vortex stability of a circular motion with three points. Uh, I should mention a couple more things that uh, if you think of the top here as being, uh, being the rescuer, you can sort of imagine this as uh, being like the thing on the dollar bill. In the back, there's like a, if you look on the dollar bill in the back, there's a pyramid shape with a little circle on the top, like an eye. So uh, you can think of this as being sort of a goal that the, uh, the US is supposed to be a rescuer rather than an aggressor or a victim, <laughs> although we've had some of the other thing lately. But anyway, the other thing is that, uh, I don't know if I can show the picture, but uh, when I was at Illinois Institute of Technology, there was a mathematician named Carl Menger who was part of the Vienna Circle of Mathematicians. And uh, I happened to find at uh, a garage sale a uh, basically a candy plate or something which shows uh, a circle. It's a circular with 12 um, little pictures around the side. And uh, if you look at those 12 pictures, it's actually the, uh oh, finally dropped it, but the, the candy tray was made by, by, some, by someone in Vienna, 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 and uh, you can look at the picture of this. Uh, so there's, uh, so that was one of the inspirations for being able to figure this out. Also, there was an elliptical, uh, elliptical tray. So it might be possible to, uh, there's a second triumvirate with Augustus Caesar. Well, I guess that's the end. <laughs>